presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Robert in New Jersey. Hey, Robert, what's going on? Hey, Tom. A great show. Thank I've been listening you so to much. you for years. you got a great thing. I've been uh, listening to you for over a decade. It's well, amazing. That... You've done a great job. I appreciate it, man. appreciate you growling and prowling out here with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Always have a plan and believe in it. Nothing good happens by accident. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 121, NASDAQ up 15, SP's up 15, gold contract down $7.80 trading at 11.40 an ounce. Silver down 40 cents at $15.68 an ounce. Platinum up four at 9.50 an ounce. Copper down a penny and a half at 2.35 a pound. Light sweet crude up a buck 76, $49.57 a barrel. Bonds. 10 year down 11 ticks, 128.14. 30 year down one full point, eight ticks, 156.13. King dollar, King dollar down 205 ticks, 95.37. The euro is up 40 at a buck 12, and the yen is trading at 119.96. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in y'all world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Okay, we start out here, and we'll start with the SPY. So SPY out here, what we have, we're trading right now at 20109. Uh, bottom line is that you're at higher price. You're coming into the swing high that was generated out here on the 17th of September. That swing high, folks, has 276 million shares. Uh, yesterday, we did 124 million. Um, I suspect, yeah, we, we could do 124 million today. Bottom line is that you're, you're into the price bar, so that's saying you can go to the top of that price bar, which is 202.89. Right now, you're at 201.07. NDX 100, this is going to be the interesting one. Why? Well, what you have with the NDX is this, folks. We had big price spread out here, no doubt, in the NDX today. Um, the three Qs traded from a price point of uh, 104.21. Right now we're at 106.10, and that's at a high. You're over the highs of the last uh, two days. Um, we're going into the high of the 18th. I don't think it's gonna make it all the way up there. You know, it's gonna, the, the top of that is 106.60. Uh, that would mean it'd have to go up another 55 cents from where we are. Um, bottom line is that you're going into that level. Uh, you do have volume contracting. We're, go, we're coming into uh, 48 million right now. You get 38, but that means that we will do about 45 million. Now, if we go into the NQs for a second, I, we look at the future of how this is set up. Watch how this is set up. This is pretty cool, folks. And what it is is this: when, I, when, when we put this intraday, what you're going to see is that. The range of the last three days, the top of that range, this is in the, in the, the futures now. Let me put this on a 10-minute for you. Okay, so the range, the top of the range was uh, 4333. Now, we're over that right now uh, by nine points. The bottom of the range was, let me put this one up here, actually, so you can see this, because I want to show you something. Okay, so the bottom of the range on this was 4263. Well, we came down uh, into that range today. We did the whole we we did the whole range, and that's quite a range. Okay, it's uh, about 60, 70, 75 points. Bottom line, you came into that bottom of that range, and you did it with light volume today, and you rejected the lows that were established out here at eleven twenty yesterday, and you had dramatically lighter volume in the future market. Now, what we've also done though, and this is where this is going to get wild, is that the expansion off that at 1350, this is when we were, the Fed was coming out with their minutes, and 
the status quo inside the minutes, but bottom line, market likes what they said, meaning being status quo. So now you got up and over that swing point. Now, the benchmark out here coming into this close is 4333. Three, three, three. Bottom line, you close over it. Uh, that would set up that you are going to go after the at least the low uh, of the high. And the low of that high is 4357 inside that NDX 100. Uh, Percentage-wise, this is what you have happening out here percentage-wise. You have the Dow up 8 tenths of a percent, the S&P up 5 tenths, and the NASDAQ up uh, 5 tenths. And that's quite a move in the NASDAQ because we were down 7 tenths uh, earlier. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Bottom line, gold contract, building cause for higher price. Um, we've traded from 1150 to 1135. We're at 1140 right now. You've done 112,000 contracts. That is backing into... 190,000 contracts, and you're backing in there with lighter volume. That's building cause for gold to go to 11.56, as well as 11.69. The equities themselves uh, are not backing off, folks, the gold equities. Uh, oil, uh, CLX5, what do we have with the oil market? Oil market has juice behind the move out here. Uh, once again, we've, we've done 438,000 contracts. It's going after the uh, swing of 50.0504. Uh, we got to 50.07. So you got into it, over it. Um, bottom line is that uh, I wouldn't be buying it right here, but it very well could break topside of an ABC structure on the way up. It'd be nice to get a pullback. If you could get a pullback on this thing, it would be just awesome because oil wants to go, XLE wants to go. You get some real action there. Bond market, the 10-year bond, this is what we have with the bond market. 10-year bond, pulling back today, uh, we're back on a million contracts. That's still light volume. You have a little price spread, though. We've, we've had price spread out here from 129.02 to 128.12. You're coming into, you know, some big numbers, 1.6 million. Bottom line, you're still pulling back with lighter volume. Uh, dollar index, dollar index still can't catch a bid. Um, in fact, you get a bigger roll that's happening in the dollar index today. Uh, we, the high of, of August 24th, folks, is 95.27. And we got into 95.04. You're at 95.41. You had an expansion of volume as we moved lower. That is saying that it's going to start, and it has been building cause, to get into that lower price point, meaning the 92.85. It's a big number, by the way. Let's go to uh, Woody in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Woody, what's going on? Not too much, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. You having a good day out there? Yeah, pretty good. I have a question on Wynn Resorts, yes. W-Y-N-N. -N. Uh, stock has had 100% of a move of a move, and I've heard you talk about that many times, and I want you to just uh, tell me what you think here. Is this, is this a shorting opportunity, or is it still going to run higher? Yeah, no, I wouldn't short it. Um, the, the reason I wouldn't short it is this is that there's a 15% shot position inside win first off, right? And the this equity um, has gone straight down from $245 to 50. So, you know, you get a dead can't bounce going. I mean, um, you know, this thing can go a lot higher and I would buy a pullback if anything. Stay right there, we'll come right back, all right? You stay okay. right there, folks. Come right back. Dow is up by 150. Nasdaq's up 22. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, the Dow is up 167, Nasdaq's up 27, S&Ps are up 21. We're talking with uh, Woody from Denver, Colorado. We're talking about wind resource. So when you take a look at this, uh, Woody, you know, I, I absolutely understand what you're saying is that, you know, uh, this came off the bottom, uh, you know, 50 bucks to 76 pretty quickly. But you can see the longer aspect. This started at 275, <laughs> um, you know, 247 rather. Um, and... Sure. I like how this has actually come off the bottom. Um, you know, the, now this can run up dramatically higher before it pulls back. This would be, it seems to me, it would be more of a buy on a pullback than a sell. Okay. okay. Appreciate it. Have a great one, man. Have a safe Thank one. Thank you. Let's go over and we take a look at the uh, NDX because the NDX, folks, okay, uh, was the weakest component out here. Uh, the NDX right now, uh, bottom line, the, the whole market right now has some juice uh, inside it. Uh, the NDX uh, took out this, uh, the top of the range it's been trading in, which is the 105.86. Um, you, in the, in the indices, we're going to have, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're going to have a lot, a dramatically lighter volume. So this will be interesting watching this shakeout. So watch this. I, I don't see a closing underneath this level. Uh, but this would be the benchmark. So the Dow yesterday uh, got over 16,933. We closed under it, but yet you had higher volume. Now that higher volume was saying, okay, you're going to go test the 16,963 once again. Well, we just blew through that. And you are not only into your you're into your initial downdraft from the 20th. Now watch how this shakes out, because this is pretty cool. So you take the 20th and 21st, yesterday we did 1.1 million shares. So the NYSE got higher volume going into that swing point from September 17th. The September 17th swing point had 1 million shares, so it's like, okay, you went into it with higher volume, you gave it up in price. That generates, you're going to go back up, test it, and you can see what happens if we went back up this, the next day. That being said, you're coming into 1.3 billion and 1.6 billion. Now watch how this correlation goes. The correlation that in your benchmark you're going to be looking at is you take the 1.1 from yesterday, 
We'll see what we end up doing today. If, in fact, we do less volume than yesterday, that's the first indication, okay, that the juice is not there, and you'll back down very quickly. And then, of course, it, we are not going to do what we're going into. So this is going to be, you can expect more volatility, you know, as we're coming into this close. Uh, this market moves in 10 or 20 handles. To, well, it moves in 7 to 10 handles on the S&P very quickly. And a handle, folks, on the S&P is just a point. That's kind of just how you, that's lingo, but that's, uh, that's a point. That's how that sh shakes out. Uh, inside the NASDAQ, uh, what you had that turned this baby around, and it was a beauty, was Netflix. Netflix, folks, uh, was down to 102 and just flipped right around and went up to 114. And what this is about, so check this out. This is, too, this is wild, too. So Netflix, um, they raised their prices. Uh, now, they, Netflix, the world's uh, most dominant online video service, is raising the price of its most popular streaming by $1 a month uh, for new customers in the U.S., Canada, and parts of Latin America. You know, I have no idea why they even sold it down on the fundamental news, because if you have Netflix, folks, Netflix is the best deal in the world out there. Now, this is only for new customers. Netflix is $8.99, um, and it's like, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, it, it's a great deal. That's the bottom line. But that's how Netflix likes to trade, okay? That, that being said, that's how Netflix does like to trade. Uh, inside the NDX 100 right now, weakness versus the strength, here you go. Strength is Netflix, up 6.25. Win, resort is second up 380, you get SanDisk up 258 at 64 bucks, and Dish Networks is up $2. Uh, downdraft, taken away from the NDX 100. You have eBay down 130, Skyworks is down 415, INCY is down 446, and Illumina is down 557. What you also have uh, in all the indices, which was given the all, all the indices, uh, some problems out here today was Apple. Apple Traded down to 108.21. You've done 52 million shares. Right now you're down here at 109.65. Sideways movement. Uh, you, you did have an expansion of volume, by the way, though, when Apple uh, did move to lower price. Let's go to uh, Frank in Sun City. Hey, Frank, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. I was just uh, looking at gold and uh, just wondering if this is a good time to, to jump in or wait for a pullback. Or Let's it take a like look at it. Looks like the GDX is just about ready to break out of its uh, range here. So uh, he wants to look at JNUG. Uh, JUNG, folks, is the direction 300% uh, exchange traded daily investment vehicle for the Market Vectors Junior Miners Index. Uh, the low uh, on this baby uh, is 32, the high is uh, 596. Okay, so what I would do here is this. Um, there's a, there's a nice base that's been built up here, no doubt. So JDXJ. What we're going to do is this. I'm going to go over to the JDXJ because this is where it trades off of, okay? This is the Miner's Trust. And inside of this, okay, when you take a look at it, you um, have Almost Gold is 5.2%, Northern Stars 4.8%, Pan American Silver is 4.8%. Um, you got uh, IM Gold, you got Hecla, you know, nice variety of, of equities. That being said, um, what I would do, and you're going to have to wait a little bit here, is that I just wait for a pullback, okay? Um, my take on this market, on this gold market right now, is that it's not only going to go, but we're really going to go. And it's just not gold, folks. Um, if you've been listening to me the last couple of days, uh, all commodities look to me like they're going to go higher now. This, this commodity bust of the last uh, five years looks to me like it's over. And yeah, I'd, I'd wait for a pullback and I'd be all over this thing because this wants to, you know, get up to this uh, 2272 area. What you may want to do is this. So, so watch how this goes. So that's technically, well, then let's go to this, go to JDX. So one second, I want to go to the, see so if you go to the JDX, that's actually stronger, which would make sense, okay? And, and the JDX, okay, does have a couple dogs in it. Um, but watch what happens here now. Now, this gets interesting. This is a fundamental take, folks, with a technical take inside the gold market. When, when gold has been coming down, okay, what happens is that producers lose more value 
even at the end of the market basically going dramatically down. And this is why. So, so let's pitch this. Let's picture that you have a producer that's trading at $40. It goes from $40 to $10, okay? That producer will turn around and continue to lose money and go to the other, let's say it went from $40 to $10. The longevity of gold prices staying low, that will go from $10 to $5, okay? Now let's say that these juniors folks are exploration stocks and they don't have any income. I'll, I'll give you the same price point so you can see what I'm talking about. The, an expiration goes from $40 to $10, right? At the longevity, it will only go from $10 to eight. The reason is that they don't have, they can kill their expenses. Now, watch what happens though, Frank. When gold starts going up, you're at the beginning of the run going up. Stay right there, okay? We'll, okay. we'll be right back, folks. We're gonna, we're gonna walk you through this. Dow's up 143, NASDAQ's up 20, S&P's are up 18. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're talking with Frank from Sun City. We're talking about the, uh, the junior equity miners, the senior equity miners, the producers, all of the above. So what happens is that we have gold right now at 11.39. And if, in fact, you know, gold continues running higher, what happens off bottoms like this, what you'll see is that at the beginning of the bottom, folks, it's the producers that will move quicker. And, and the reason that the producers will move quicker is because their expenses get killed quicker and the leverage that they have on the gold price versus what their expenses are goes up pretty quickly. Then what ends up happening, so let's pitch this, we're at 1139. 
But if we actually do run to like a 1250, 1270, somewhere around there, then you're going to see the small caps kick into gear. And the reason the small caps are going to kick into gear is that then the producers turn around and say, oh, no, I go. I got to go buy a yeah, junior. Do you know what I mean? So that's kind of how these are set up. So when you're trading that, I would actually go into the producers first, Frank, the larger producers right now. Yeah, I've noticed the juniors have been lagging a bit. Well, they were great. The juniors, I can tell you, I've owned a couple juniors and have accumulated some big numbers in them for the last three and a half months. And they haven't moved. It's awesome. Do you know what I mean? And it's because of that fundamental aspect that what happens at the end of this, folks, is that they've cut all the expenses. And it's it'll blow your mind, you know, what you can run a gold mine with. It's, it's like three or four people. Do you know what I mean? As long as you're not producing. When you're, when you're producing, it's a problem. Okay? So, I, you know, I felt I took advantage of that. We'll find out whether I did. <laughs> um, but, so that's the number there. But now what happens to the way this is moving, those, those producers, well, you can see it. You can see an eco eagle. I mean, they're, they're leveraged out there big time. And you can see an eco, uh, what, in three weeks has gone from 21 to 27. You know, not, that's 20%. It's not that huge, really, but it's not bad. You know what I mean? Um, but that, so what I would do if you're, Getting into these now, I would get into the production companies. That's what I would do. I'd wait for it, but I'd wait for a pullback too, because they're they're all acting really nice. Not all of them, okay? But you know, Rango Resources, that's acting good. You know, Rango just went from uh, 55 uh, to 65. Wait for a pullback somewhere around 63. The the, the this is this is going to be a tough one, folks. And this is what it is. When I did the gold report on Tuesday, right? So so picture this. We have a few equities, we have five equities that really ran nice, right? So when I look at them, I'm saying to myself, you know, we took the stops up. And then I'm looking at a few of these others, I'm saying to myself, you know, I'm saying, yeah, I'll wait and buy this pullback. But it's almost like if, they, if some of them actually do pull back to where I think they might pull back, it's like, okay, hold it, that's going to be a problem in the gold market. Um, what it's kind of showing out here right now is that they almost don't want to pull back. But I would still, that being said, money management-wise, you have to if you're not in, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of looks like they they don't want to pull back right now. <laughs> I and if they, if it's a real run, the first real run off the bottom, they will go in a straight line. That's you know, yeah. and and the the doll is the one that's screaming, you know, the the doll still can't get higher price, which is pretty amazing, you know. And what you had out uh, uh, today is that you had the doll expand on volume contracts as it moved lower. So that's telling me that the dollar is going to go lower. And as of two days ago, folks, this was the first time um, in my own head that, and since 2003, that it seems to me that all commodities are going. You know, the, the, my, where my head's at right now is that all commodities are going, hard assets are going, and all currencies. Factually, what has happened is this. The dollar hasn't gone higher. And all you keep hearing is that the dollar has gone higher. Gone, I, I'm saying to myself, well, the dollar's gone higher. The, the high... The last swing high on the dollar was August 7th. The, the high, well, let's pull it up right now on the dollar. Where do you see this? This is, this is what is so wild, folks, that you really want to check things when people keep saying the same thing over and over again. The, the high in the dollar, okay, was generated in March of 2015. We're October, right? It's like, hold it. The dollar already made its move. What that's telling me, and these other currencies have got killed, but this is what has happened. All currencies are going down, and the dollar is going down less. When that happens, guess what? Hard assets, I don't care what kind of hard asset you want, folks, get it. That's telling me that hard assets are costing more money across the world, across the globe. Why? Because there's so much cash, you know? So I'm bullish, man. I'm bullish, you know, and I think we're right at the beginning of it. I think it's going to get carried away, you know, because the Fed has no guts, you know? So... And, you know, it, it, it's gone into the correlation, which is really a trip, is that the, uh, you know, the Fed minutes come out today, and sure enough, they're worried about China. Well, if they're worried about China, um, you know, that's good cause to worry about China. China's still overvalued the stock market. Um, you know, if you look at Shanghai, um, Shanghai has taken a good hit. Shanghai is running at, uh, let's see, so Shanghai is running at 3,100. I mean, they got a high volume low at 2,500. No, 3,100, so that's 600 more points down. You know, 
China's not going to turn around. I mean, in the long run, China's going to be fine, but China's not going to turn around right now. And I think every time that our markets think the Fed's going to go up on rates, it gets spooked. So if they're going to look at both of those, we get short-term rates. And then, and then if you put together the, the deal about, like, you know, the 10 years at 2.1, but yet in France it's at 9 tenths of a percent, in Germany's at 5 tenths, and Italy's at 1.6, that, that absolutely makes zero sense to me. If I wasn't, I mean, just a, just a regular math class would be like, okay, so Europe's a mess, and they can get cheaper money than we can? You know, so. so. So you don't think the rates are, are going up anytime soon this year? No, I don't. I don't. I don't even think they're going to go up the first three months of next year. Every time I keep looking at, okay, so just, just look at this for a second. It's like, how does this work that France, Germany, Italy, Italy, Italy just had a scandal. The mayor of Italy just had to resign, folks, today because he's using a credit card. They just had a big... Uh, yeah. Anyway, there's a million scandals over there, uh, and and yet the world is is giving uh, 1.6 to Italy, and we're 2.1. So when I when I just, when I just look at that, if I if I wasn't even a technical person, it's like okay, hold on, man. I mean, Italy's beautiful. Go to Italy, folks. You're gonna love it. I'd love to retire in Italy. There's no doubt about it. Okay, <laughs> it's fabulous. Go to the Amalfi Coast, man. It'll blow your mind. You'll be healthy. You drink a lot of good wine, but yet you won't even be loaded. I mean, it's just it's just a different ball game because you're always outside. You're always working and doing something. But anyway, when you look at those rates, that is a disconnect in my own head beyond belief. You know, because. They don't work like us. There's no doubt about it. They, you know, they're not as creative. You know, great countries, but you know, they have. You think, think about regulations. They have so many regulations you can't see straight. I had an office in London. And I'm sure it's not like this now, but I, in, in the 80s, folks. Okay, if you opened an office, I had an office in London, and it was a, it was a great little office, tiny little place that I was paying a fortune for. But guess what? It took six weeks to get a phone. <laughs> it's like you gotta be kidding. Me. And that's that, that, we're talking about 1983. Six weeks to get a phone, but that was normal then, okay? So so when I put it all together, man, I think we get a commodity run that's starting, and I think it's, uh, and it makes sense, too. We, 2002 to started, it was went to 2011, busted down from 2011 with 2015, and guess what? We still need food, you need metals, countries are out of their mind, they keep printing money, you know? Yep, sounds bullish for gold, then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know, Thanks, Tom. what a trip. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. You stay right there. We'll come right back. I'm telling you, folks, thanks for being out there because I love doing this program. Because you know what? All these things flip around in your head 8 million times a day, and then they finally get spun out. Stay right there. We'll come right back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. 
For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, right now, we get the uh, Dow up 108. NASDAQ is up 8. S&Ps are up uh, 14 and a half. And if we go over and we take a look, this is just amazing because, uh, you know, depending on how, uh, if you've been uh, here, the uh, whole program, you know, the first thing we did was brought up the uh, NDX 100 because that's been the weakest link. We showed you the range it was in. And sure enough, uh, bottom line, it jumped right back inside that range, folks. So this is pretty cool because the, the range on both sides, okay, just to review, the range, the range this morning, it, you know, went underneath that swing point from yesterday. I'm showing you the futures now, okay? Went under the range from yesterday at the 4268. Didn't have enough juice. Way too much volume. Rejected it. Pops top side. Guess what? Gets over that side. Juices it up. Doesn't have the juice there. Uh, bottom line, you're back inside that range. So anything in the NDX under 4333, bottom line, nothing's changed. It's just pretty amazing, actually. Um, and the, the Dow, if the Dow ever gives up, uh, now this is really bizarre because the Dow just gave up uh, 75 points in about a heartbeat. Um, if the Dow actually gets under uh, 693, which would be really hard to do. But guess what? I thought it was hard to do when we were, when we were uh, just talking a few minutes ago before we were, we were um, talking with uh, Frank. Uh, the bottom line is that that number up there, uh, that would be a total failure. That would be an absolute mind blow because we're not going to have the volume. You know, meaning the, we're not even going to have the volume that we had yesterday uh, inside the uh, NYSE. Let's get a Mark in Boston. Hey, Mark, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? You're doing all right. Can't Good. Complain. Nice to hear that voice. <laughs> Actually, I do have one complaint. <laughs> yeah? What is it? I, I cut out MRO too soon. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at it. So, Marathon Oil, um, the low is 14, the high is 36. It pays a 4% dividend. Okay, so you're going to be all right. Because, okay, so watch the, this, you know, you're, you tested the f high today and you're going to have uh, a lot lighter volume. That's what you want, you know. So mm -hmm. this is off the bottom of $14.75, folks. Off the bottom of $14.75. Goes up to $20.39. Got over yesterday's. It's subtle, too. Goes over yesterday's. Closes underneath it. Now, real question is, where does it retrace to? You'd love to see it. Go to the highs of the ninth, which would be 1687. You know, we these are going to retrace. You know, I mean, where some of the problem does come in, there's no doubt that you know these these equities. You know, this stock here, folks, you know, got cut in half. Went from 41 dollars uh, September of 2014 to 14 dollars. And you can see now, this is what's really cool. So check this out. See right. That I get on monthly right now, a weekly actually. Man, there's, see, there's accumulation right that week of the 18th of September. Let me put this on a monthly for a second. Yeah, it seems like a lot of accumulation now. Yeah, right? there is, man. Yeah, there is. 
Yeah, so you, you're going to want to get back into it. That's the bottom line, because this thing wants to run to like 2448. That'll be the first mm. place. So what happens with a lot of these dead cat bounces, folks, well, it's two different things that are happening. This could be a dead cat bounce, and it still wants to run to 2448, which is really cool. You know what I mean? And, and then, you know, it also can be the very end of a vicious downdraft, and, you know, the thing's going higher, and it's going to stay higher, too. You know, so... Yeah. That's that's so, that's the pleasure of trading these coming off this bottom because to me you know you heard what I just you know went through I mean I, I think that uh, we're at the beginning of another commodity run. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the same camp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, I just you, so you think sixteen look for sixteen eighty seven on it? Yeah, and where I'm going is that that is where the what you have that was the spike down, but the top of that. Um, mm -hmm. Should hold it pretty good. That that would have been the trading day of the September 9th, the, the, and that lines up with, you know, you have a benchmark where it come off the bottom, and it, that a pull back. So you want to see a pullback, you know, with less than 15, 16 million shares, and you got that. You got some good action, man, because that mm -hmm. very, this very well could be the A to B of an ABC up, which would make sense because. When these come down, folks, some of them came down so fast. This went from $27.77, June 26th, straight down two months. Look at that, two months to $14. Well, what happens on the way back up, because they went down so fast, there's, there's no resistance. That's what's kind of cool with these. Do you know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're vicious on the way down if you're in them. It's disgusting. But on the way back up, it's very surprising how fast they go up there because there are no resistance barriers because everyone got blown out on the way down. Mm -hmm. Cooking, brother. Thank you, sir. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Uh, we go take a look at uh, some of the uh, higher volume stuff. Well, here, let's, I want to go see this volume on the NYSE because, see, the volume on the NYSE uh, was really weak when we got on. Yeah, it, should, it should do a billion. We're at 700 million right now. Uh, so, uh, it, yeah, we only have, uh, you know, approximately 15 minutes left, but a uh, huge amount of volume does come in at the uh, end of the market. Uh, small caps. Let's go over to the small caps because the small caps, folks, um, this is something that uh, you, you want to be careful of going short. Um, and the reason is, is that, uh, and this is where this, this is, this is going to be uh, um, some divergence, but if, in fact, the commodity run really gets some wind underneath it. Uh, many of the oil companies, mining companies, commodity companies in general are in the small caps. So what would happen there is that you'd get some juice into them. And, uh, you know, if you remember, if you bring up the small caps, I believe the small caps, watch, if I bring up the small caps, this will, this will crack you up because this happened after... I'm going to put this on after the debacle in 2000. Remember, um, the small caps in 2000, folks, went to $614. That's the Russell 2000. What's the, then the, the crash, okay, the small caps go down to 324. Well, the small caps never looked back when they made the acceleration up where the NASDAQ uh, only had just made its high last week of the 2000, the small caps took its high out in January of 04. And what that's all about, that's all the small gold companies, the oil companies, all the above. The small caps went straight up from 324 up to 856. Then what they did, they crashed like everything else, and they go back down to 342 in the midst of the crash. They go from 342, and <laughs> now we're at 1161. So, that's always a little bit tricky as to, number one, what's in the small caps and, you know, how they shake out. Now, let's go over, I'm going to show you something on the NASDAQ because this was great. Because Z, this morning, had called um, Basil Chapman when he was on the air. And he was asking him, oh, Z is one of our traders in the den, folks. And he was asking him, uh, does he think that there's a double top uh, in 2000? And as that what the NASDAQ did. And we'll check this out. So I was listening, sitting there trading in my office, and it's so cool, man. It's a My take, folks, it's not only a double top, it's a monster double top, and this is why. So check this out. The composite in 
March of 2000. Price point, stay right there. We'll come back. I'm going to bisect and dissect this baby for you because it's a trip, man. Let me tell you. It was, it was a heads up. Lights on. Dow Industrials up 128. NASDAQ up 15. S&P's up 17. We're going to be right back, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 131, Nasdaq's up 17, S&Ps are up 14 and a half. Okay, so we're talking about the NASDAQ and the aspect of uh, a double top from the 2000s. So check this out. The March 2000 high, folks, was 5132 in the composite. We had done 32.7 billion shares there. That's in 2000. We came up, we tested that in July, and we did 9.5 billion. 9.5 billion versus 32.7. It's not even close. Depending on how long you've been uh, doing price and volume, folks, uh, that is anemic. Now, that's not the only part. The second part gets better. And what the second part is, is this. The second part is that you came off the high and you had an actual expansion of volume. You did 10.5 billion in August. What does that say? That says double top big time. And what it also says, though, is that this is saying that you're First stop down is 4116. That's how this is laid out. Let's go to Ned in Canada. Hey, Ned, what's going on? Yes, right, Tom. How's it going? It's going great, man. You having a good day out there? Really good. Cool. 
Yeah, so Tom, you, you just uh, discussed the Nasdaq. So I'm just wondering, uh, how far do you, I mean, you mentioned 4,100, but how far do you really see it going down after all this kind of carnage is over in your head? Well, what I do is this. Okay, I'll go to the S&P for you, right? Do you want me to go to the S&P? Sure. 4,100 said quite a, okay, so let's go to the S&P. So if we do the SPY, this will give you a decent indication of where the first stop, you know, we, well, we got to the first stop. The, fir the first stop that we were talking about, we got to. That was the October of 2014 level. That, that level there was uh, 181. We were looking at that 3.9 billion. Well, guess what? We ended up doing 3.7. So that's saying it's coming back down there again. Now, the next leg down, you know, bottom line, you know, this thing, you're talking about 1570 on the S&P. So you see the, the commodities coming back up, in your, in your opinion, and then you have the, the S&P going down, right? That's correct. And, now, and this is a great, that's a great observation because that absolutely would be totally different than what we had on the run going from 2002 going up to 2011 because they all went up together. And that correlation was happening in August. In August, when the market was getting hit in a big way, commodity, well, the commodity, the equities weren't getting hit. The, the oil ones were, but the gold and silver wasn't. Um, the, the softs, meaning the, the soybeans, the uh, sugar, the corn, they were getting hit, you know. So, and when I'm talking about commodities, I'm talking about all of them. And this, that's what's so intriguing about kind of what I'm saying, because, you know, I have traded a lot of those other commodities. I watch them all the time because we have so many traders in the den that, that trade them. Um, so, so in your head, I mean, you're a technical analyst, right? But uh, do, you, do you see any catalyst that, uh, that could push the S&P down, uh, in your opinion, as of now? Like, is, is there anything out there, or is it just pure technical analysis in your head right now? Well, you don't have to be a tech. I mean, fundamentally, listen, I, I started out ripping apart balance sheets, okay? I did bankrupt bonds. Fundamental is, it's an easy deal, okay? The, the bottom line is that you're, you're believing what's on the spreadsheets, okay? As a fundamentalist, okay, if, if you put, want that cap, what happens is that the S&P is at the top of its range, earnings per share. That's the bottom line. So that's, that's a catalyst in itself. But you know, like when I was, uh, I mean, I'm in the market in and out and stuff like that. So sure. I was expecting, when this downturn came, I was expecting more the Facebooks, the, the companies like that to be going down. And they're actually the companies that held up. So this was a bit of a surprise. So to me, what went down was more like the Exxon, the, uh, you know, the, the bigger well, companies. Face, Facebook's taking over the world, man. Why would Facebook go down? I'm, seri I'm serious about that, too, man. I'm not kidding. I mean, we're in a digital age, man. Everyone, that, they think that virtual reality is real, man. <laughs> yeah, but you're seeing... Uh, come, come back at the 4 o'clock hour. Stay there. We're going to... 4 right, to 5. We're going to be right back, folks. Sure. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Nick in Tampa. Hey, Nick, what's going on? Tom O'Brien, it is an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. We appreciate you calling. No problem. Um, dude, I've been listening to your show for about two years now, and it has just been wonderful. I listen to you, Basil, Andy, and you guys do an amazing job. Well, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you growling and prowling out here with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever. You focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Believe in yourself and everything you can be. James Gardner. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials up 138, NASDAQ up 62, S&P's up 18 and a half. Gold contract down $9.60, trading at 1,139 an ounce. Silver down 41 cents, that's $15.61 an ounce. Copper, $2.35 a pound. Light sweet crude up $1.91, $49.72 a barrel. Bonds, 10-year down, 8 ticks, 128.17. 
30 off a full point, 156.20. King dollar. King dollar down 170 ticks at 95.41. King dollar just can't handle higher price, folks. It wants the, uh, it's into the bar from the August 24th. I suspect it wants that low, which is 92.50. Euro, Euro is up 36 at 112, and the end trading at 119.94. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? We look at the SPY first. SPY is up $1.79 today. You're trading at a price point of $201.20. You've done 147 million shares. You're into the bar from the last swing high up here, which was the 17th, the top of that. Uh, is one is 202.89. We're going to go for it. We'll be there tomorrow morning. We'll see uh, how it handles it. That's 276 million shares you're going into, as well as 346 million. The Qs, the NDX 100. The Qs continue to be the weakest link inside the indices when you're talking the diamonds. Uh, While well, you're talking the Dow, the Nasdaq. Uh, are the small caps. The Qs today did 49 million shares. That's a good expansion of volume. You're going into, however, you're going into 56 million. The Qs are at 106.05. Uh, that is uh, over the, well, it's, it's into the bar from the 18th. Uh, more than likely, we're going to see that go to the top of the 18th. We'll see if it can handle it. The Qs still are the weakest indice in the aspect as to where this market is right now. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Gold wants higher price, folks. Uh, bottom line, the dollar can't handle higher price. The dollar wants lower price. Uh, gold, what gold did out here today is this. We're at 1139. We have done 115,000 contracts. That 115,000 is coming into 190. Gold's building cost to get into the 1156 mark, which was the Swing high from the 24th, as well as the swing high from the 24th of September and the 24th of August. That's 1169. So that's a big number. Now, let's go over to the bond market. Bond, bonds, we'll take a look at this 10 year. And what we have with the 10 year is this the 10 year today trades down to 128.11. We did 1.1 uh, million contracts. That's an expansion of volume, but still dramatically lighter than, lighter than when you're going into. You're going into uh, 1.3, 1.4 million contracts. So you don't have a breakdown by any means here. That's on your 10. We take a look at your 30. What we have with the 30. Also, you pull back. You pull back with 278,000 contracts. Now the 30 um, also is pulling back into uh, 282. So the 30 had a little more volume uh, on the juice, but what the 30. On all the 10 has done is got into a swing point with volume. They both look like they want higher price continually. King dollar. What do we have with King dollar? Bottom line, King dollar is the roll is on. Uh, we got to a low today of 95.04. We had 28,000 contracts. So as you moved lower, you had the volume expand and pretty dramatically. We'll be doing 19,000, 21,000. We do 28,000 today. King dollar is trying to get into this. August 24th bar, folks. The top of that is 92, 95.27. Uh, we got to 95.04. We're talking with our man, Mr. Uh, Ned from Canada. We're talking about the general market. Thanks for holding, Ned. Appreciate it, man. No problem. So you were talking about that. You, you thought the, we were talking about, folks, the, the, the pullback in the marketplace. And <coughs> last question was he thought that a Facebook would pull back um, I guess more dramatically than other stocks, right? Yeah, companies that uh, actually their uh, PE ratios are a, bit, are a little bit high for uh, their valuation. Right. Okay. So, because we we were, uh, so I I totally understand what you're saying there. Okay, but in the aspect of business wise, right? Meaning what it takes to run a business. Okay. F Facebook to me is like a Google. Facebook has taken over the world. But what you also have is this, and this is the kicker, folks, okay, that the expense side of Facebook is minimal. And you, you, Facebook is growing at almost 50%. So you have a PE out here of 44%, but yet it's growing at 50%. So it's really a negative PE. And what I mean by the expense side of it is this. So picture something for a second. You had brought up the aspect of an ExxonMobil. I, I, listen, I know what you're saying. It's like Exxon, 
you'd think that it, was, it would be a better company, it's oil, but bottom line is that all this Facebook has, you know, is servers. That's all they need. ExxonMobil needs what? Needs oil, needs dirt, needs all of the above. Different, different ball game. And, you know, face, so I'm just, you know, we get a pullback, like I think we're gonna get a pullback, you'll see Facebook pull back, but Facebook in general, the same with Google in general, over the course of years, you can, you can put both of those in your, in your bureau and 10 years from now, they're gonna be a lot higher, man. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, I see what you It's just that it's, they, the advertising revenue in Facebook, folks, is amazing. Now, so check this out. The, the results on Facebook also are amazing. Okay, so, so picture, the way the TFNN is set up, folks, is this, is that we make money by having advertising clients, we make money by newsletters, okay? In order for us to grow, we have to spend huge amounts of money on radio stations. So we spend huge amounts of money marketing, right? Well, what has happened digitally, which is really cool for us, is that digitally what, is, what has happened is that over the course of years, everyone is listening digitally and listening on their phones and less on radio stations, okay? So what has happened there is that the shift in advertising money goes from radio stations into a digital network, okay? Now, what has happened for anyone that's in the advertising business, and us in particular, is really cool. And what it is is this, is that when we're on a radio station, when, let's say you're trying to buy advertising and you want to reach someone, I'd be selling you saying, okay, listen, you know, we think a lot of people are listening, okay? Well, it's not qualified. What happens now on the web, and this has been happening you know, for a good seven, eight years, we have qualified listeners. We know where they're listening, we know how long they're listening, and with Facebook, what happens, it's the same thing. So when we're giving money to Facebook to basically push video out, right, we know exactly how much more we're paying. It's a, it's a good setup compared to how the setup used to be. You see what I'm saying? So, and we're just, we're just a raindrop. So when large people are spending large amounts of money, they got a good business plan. Cooking, brother. Have a great oh, one. Have a safe one. Come right back, folks. If you're a trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. We had the uh, Dow finish up 138, NASDAQ up uh, 19, S&P's up 17. And when you take a look at the uh, NYSE, folks, uh, bottom line, uh, didn't even do a billion shares, 919. So uh, how's that shakeout going? Well, here you go. Uh, would, you, would you take a look at the uh, Dow uh, yesterday? Well, we take the swing point from the 17th of September. 17th of September, he had 1 billion shares. We go down, we come all the way back up. Yesterday, it failed at the swing point, and it failed with 1.1 billion. With failure means it, it didn't fail on volume, it failed on price. It got over the price of 933, closed underneath it, and when they do that, they always like to go right back up. Bottom line, one day. Normally, it's within one, two, three days. Bottom line goes right back up. Now, we go back up, however, and what do you do? You go back up, and you go back up with dramatically light volume. That volume characteristic is going into the 20th and the 21st. The 20th and the 21st, we had 1.3 billion, so that's really dramatically by the volume. Now, that being said, you're going to go right up to ICE, where, where ICE, now this is in the Dow, the, the NASDAQ is not the same. And the Dow, that's saying that, hey, guess what? You're at 17,500, yeah, it can go up to that uh, 345, 17,345 pretty intense. Um, Alcoa, Alcoa the dog. Alcoa closed at $11.03, uh, pennies, a uh, one penny. It's trading at 1060 and Alcoa, folks, has been a dog for so long, it's sick. So their estimate was, uh, they, this, uh, now this is the beginning of earnings in a big way. Uh, normally Alcoa's first, uh, this time they weren't. Uh, Alcoa, the estimate was uh, 13 cents, they made seven. It's surprising they're not killing the, st the shares more than that. Um, Alcoa suffering under the weight of global aluminum glut, reported earnings that missed analyst estimates uh, after the price of metal fell for the fourth straight quarter. The thing that's amazing, folks, by the way, too, is this. Alcoa can't make money when commodities are up, and they can't make money when commodities are down. When commodities were up, Alcoa blamed, well, they, 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 yeah, they blamed the price of oil. Uh, but the largest expense component in making aluminum is oil. Uh, the largest U.S. Uh, aluminum company said last week it's going to split in two parts to move analysts, uh, a move that analysts say could protect the manufacturing sector from the volatility of commodity prices. Uh, in the meantime, the third quarter net profit fell to two cents a share from 12 cents a year earlier. Earnings excluding one-time items were seven cents a share, trailing the 13 cent average of 12 estimates. Now, you know what's really crazy is that when they dissect and bisect this, you see that, that line? In the meantime, third quarter net income fell two cents a share from 12 cents. Now here's the line. Earnings excluded one-time items were seven cents a share. <laughs> I, I suspect the one-time item, folks, I don't know this yet, but when, when you read a sentence like that, that's telling me they didn't even make seven cents a share. You know. So bottom line, you have AA, this equity, if we take a look at this equity, oh man, look at this, You're talking about a one-way trip, amazing. Um, we pull this back, so in 2007, the equity's at $48, crashes to, to six, $5, 497 to be exact, does a counter trend bounce at $17, and now you're going to go after um, $10 to $7.97. And, and you know what the danger in this one is? The danger is that it has a high volume low at 497. What, ha what stopped that, oh, this is pretty cool, so check this out if you want to see, this is cool. Okay, so you know when we talk about a lot of high volume lows, high volume highs, right? 
and it's hard to break high volume lows. And this is the, this the, this is a good heads up because this should hold the next time down too. In 2009, that was the low of Alcoa. March, in the month of March, we went from eight dollars and twenty cents to four ninety seven. Now, as we did that, folks, you had one point three billion shares. Okay, so now stay with me for a second. So it's March of 2009. Well, we tested that in August of 2015. And what we did is this. We tested it with 535 million versus 1.3 billion. You went into the high of the high volume low, which was 820. We went down to 797. And then we closed at the month at 945. So this is pretty cool. Because now watch what this says. That says that your low is tested. That really is also saying your low is in. Okay, so now that's the longer basis. Now let's put it on the shorter basis. So what, on the shorter basis, what did Alcoa do? Okay, Alcoa came off the bottom, had a decent sign of strength the 28th of September, had an additional one August 5th and 6th. Okay, so now what do you do with it? This is going to be cool because if you, if you want to do a dead cat bounce, this is going to line up for a dead cat bounce. That's where I'm going with this. So, so now you, you turn around and you put it on a weekly. When you put it on a weekly, what you'll probably see is this, is that this will probably come all the way back to 942. And if, it, if in fact it does that, it's not going to be a bad setup. And, and the why? Because what, what you'll have is this. You can put your stop right underneath that, and then you're gunning for the last high that was out there, which is 1118. And of course, you can have a dead cat bounce, and they're going to split that's underway. Uh, bottom line is that, you know, Alcoa is down, and I expect it's going to go lower. And it, don't, don't ever buy this for a long term deal. This, this is one of the biggest dogs in the marketplace. Gap, let's uh, go to Gap and see what's going on with Gap. Uh, let's see, uh, GPS. Thank you, GPS. So Gap just come out with numbers. Uh, Gap closed at uh, twenty-eight dollars and ninety-five cents. It's trading at twenty-seven dollars. Let's see who they're going to blame. Okay, they got uh, so the Banana Republic creative director stepped down as the brand failed. Man, that used to be a great brand too. The uh, this is okay. So their sales were down 1%. The estimate was 1.6%. Uh, so they did better. So the, the market was expecting the sales to go down. They, uh, they, they're saying that they had increased promotional activity, um, and that was hurting their gross margins. The same sale comps are down 6.2%. That's really dangerous for a, uh, a clothing company, folks, big time. Um, Old Navy was up. That was up uh, 4%. Um, Banana Republic was down 10%. That's a big number. Um, big number. No, no two ways about that. So Banana Republic's creative uh, director is going to step down from day-to-day -day operations. Um, the brand posted declining comparable sales stores for six of the past seven months, including 11% drop in August. 11%, man, oh man, that's pretty intense. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me look at this equity. Jeep, oh, look at this, man. This is a mess, too. Wow. Okay, so we take a look at this. Man, some of these equities have just got killed. So the gap has gone from $43 to $28. Now it's going to gap down two bucks. It's gonna, this is going to be an ABC down. Let me see this thing. $28. Yeah, this, is, this looks like it's going to take another leg down. Man, it's going to be a big ABC down, man. Yeah, you're trading at 27.44. The last low out here is 27.33. This, this is going to be a monster ABC down. You stay right there, folks. You're coming right back.
Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank. Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesamento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we had the Dow Industrials close up 138. You had the Nasdaq up 19. S&Ps are up uh, 19. Some of the uh, Dow stocks. Well, here, I'll give you the leadership uh, inside the Dow Industrials out here today. Leadership was Nike. Nike was uh, up 281, trading at 124. Caterpillar was number two at 146. Chevron was up $1.79, trading at 89.91. And Boeing was up 202. The weakness inside the Dow, Apple was the weakness. Uh, went down 128. Goldman Sachs was off a uh, dollar 16. Pfizer was down 20, um, and United Health was down uh, 35. The Fed came out with their uh, minutes, folks, um, today, and the so at two o'clock, uh, what you did is the Federal Reserve came out with the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, and bottom line, inside those minutes, they're talking about, uh, well, Federal Reserve officials put off interest rate increase in September because of growing risk to their outlook for economic growth and inflation, mainly from China, even as they continue to say that they were on track to raise the target later this year. They actually didn't say that they were on tar target to raise the, tar the target later this year until after they came out and said, we're not raising rates, then Janet Yellen um, got up, what, three or four days later and said, no, we still plan on raising rates. Bottom line, uh, well, I'll read to us a little bit, but I expect you're not going to be able to see it. Why? Because every single pullback uh, in the marketplace, the Fred um, basically freaks out. But now what they do is that they freak out for all over the whole world, which is, which is pretty wild. Anyway, policymakers agree that developments over the inner, now this is a quote, agree that developments over the inner meeting period 
had not materially altered the committee's economic outlook, according to the minutes of September 17th, 16th and 17th. Nevertheless, the committee decided that it was prudent to wait for additional information confirming that the economic outlook had not deteriorated. The FOMC noted that domestic economic conditions, including data on consumer spending and housing, had continued to improve and that the labor market had reached always close to the committee's long-run estimate for employment. Still, concerns over the China and its potential spillover to other economies, quote, were likely to depress U.S. net exports and further cause strengthening of the dollar, which could damp inflation in the U.S. Participants anticipated that the recent global development would likely put further downward pressure on inflation in the near term. Compared with their previous forecast, now, more now saw risk of inflation as tilted to the downside. Details of the Fed's deliberations came three weeks after the Fed decided against raising the rate. The decision to stay near zero was followed on October 2nd by a disappointing jobs number for September. Employees added 142,000 workers for non-farm payrolls in the month, lower than its estimates in, Bloom, in a Bloomberg survey of 96 economists. The minutes showed the committee held lengthy discussions about how far they should attempt to push down unemployment even after recognizing labor resources have been substantially reduced in the recent months. Some committee members pointed to the remaining slack represented by part-time workers and those outside the workforce. A number of participants noted that eliminating slack along such broader dimensions might require a temporary decline in the unemployment rate below its longer run normal level and that this development could speed the return of inflation to 2%. Fed Chairman Janet Yellen made just that point at, on the, in the September 24th speech in Amherst. Participants indicated that they do not see the changes in asset prices during the intermediate period as bearing significantly on their policy choice, except insofar as they affected the outlook for achieving the committee's macroeconomic activities. Okay, so check this out, man. I'm telling you, you gotta go to school just to figure out what the Fed's saying. I'm just gonna say that, quote, this paragraph you again. Participants indicated that they do not see the changes in asset prices during the intermediate period as bearing significantly on their policy choices. So they're saying that no matter what the choice they make, they don't care whether the market goes down. Insofar, now back to them, insofar as they affected the outlook for achieving the committee's macroeconomic objectives. That's a crock, folks. The bottom, you know, because what they're saying, what their macro deal is, is their macro deal is employment and inflation. The whole basis, folks, of free money is making sure that in order to get out of the mess we're in, that asset values would go up so that our accounts would go up so that we would have more money, okay? It's, it's an asset value inflation deal. There's no doubt that that's what they did. They're claiming now that they don't care about that, okay? The bottom line is that they absolutely care about that. Well, why do they care about that? Well, they care about that because that has people go spend more money. Now, unfortunately, what happens in a, in a bubble like that, well, it, not, it doesn't have to be a bubble, is that the closer that you are to the bank, the more that that asset value is going to go up. That certainly doesn't help the, the person on the street, okay? What that does is that that helps the top of the economy. And what we've seen, and we, we, we can see this through the aspect of negative interest rates on the three-month note and the six-month note in the United States, is that it's the corporations that have got all the bread, and they won't spend the bread, and that's why when they are putting the bread inside or trying to buy three-month or six-month notes, that they are willing to pay the government now instead of getting paid from the government, okay? So, and the aspect of where the rates are going, bottom line, these, these rates, to me, are not going up. You know, we talked about this um, in you know, the last part of uh, the 4 o'clock hour quite a bit. Um, the, the, the structure right now um, in the world is that we have very high rates 
in correlation to the rest of the countries in the world. Our 10-year right now is a 2.1, and France is at 9 tenths. So if you lend money to France, you get paid 9 tenths of 1% for 10 years. If you lend money to, to Germany, you get paid 5 tenths, one half a percent for 10 years. If you lend money to Italy, you get paid 1.6. So Italy is less than us. That absolutely is insane. If you lend money to, to uh, Switzerland, by the way, you have to pay them. So check this out. This is pretty cool. If you lend money to Switzerland for 10 years, you're going to be paying a quarter percent a year to give your money to Switzerland. Now, is that... <laughs> that's a trip, man. That, that's... But, but that says a lot in the aspect of how much cash is out there, large cash, and, you know, where is it going? Okay, let's go over and we're going to take a look at the, uh, how the oil market is traded out here because we were talking about, you know, oil's at the top of its range right now. That range, um, and, you know, this is pushing with volume, man. This, is, uh, this has to do with the, the dollar, the commodities, all, all of the above. The last swing high out here is 50.04, and I wouldn't be buying it yet. I, I, you have to wait for a pullback. But this very well could be an ABC up, folks, so it would be a trip. The confirmation would be if you pull back and have lighter volume, because it's a big ABC. The eight, the eight point on this um, is $38.51. The B is uh, 50. So you're talking 15 bucks. Your C is uh, 43, so that's 58. It's a big number in here at 49. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. The Dow finished up 138, NASDAQ was up 19, S&Ps are up 18. Gonna be right back, folks. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed Taz as proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom 
Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. And don't forget, folks, uh, we program 24 hours a day at TFNN. You can get all that programming right on your cell phone. TFNN.MOBI. Hook it up to your Bluetooth in your car and you're cooking. Uh, you can also get Tiger TV. Uh, that's the video and the audio. Just go to the right-hand side. You go to TFNN.com and you'll see it right there. Tiger TV. Just hit it. Our servers know exactly what type of device you are uh, trading on. Uh, trading on. Listening on. Okay, now let's go over to the financials. Uh, we take a look at the J.P. Morgan Chase, because we, if we're talking um, interest rates, you know, bottom line is that these banks need bigger interest rates because uh, they can work on a bigger spread. J.P. Morgan, bottom line, comes off a high of uh, 70 or 62 right now. Uh, you know, this is one of the strongest financials out here. Uh, bottom line, though, she's rolling over. You know, uh, she got down to uh, 50. Um, on the 24th, and there's just no traction uh, there whatsoever. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, BRK, uh, I believe, and I'll take a look at this. BRKs. Okay, so Berkshire is trading at 133. That's off a high of uh, 148. Put this back a bit. Now, Berkshire is in worse shape than J.P. Morgan. Uh, this came off the high with really big volume. You know, we came down. This is really interesting. So, and I'm not talking about the high from August 24th. I'm talking, this is December. December of 2014, Berkshire went from 152 to 144. You had juice behind that move, big volume. Uh, next move confirmed it. Now what you're doing is that you're building cars. Go back on monthly. This is building cars to get down into uh, 125 to 114. And if we do take a look at the XLF, I believe Berkshire Hathaway right now is the largest weighting in the XLF. Let's see. Yeah, it still is. Berkshire is 8.6% inside the XLF. Um, Wells Fargo is 8. So let's go take a look at the Wells Fargo. Uh, and, uh, you know, Wells Fargo itself has been on Wells Fargo, hmm. XLF, JP Morgan. Well, we'll go, we'll go to uh, Goldman next. For some reason, I just forgot what the symbol was for Wells Fargo. Shame on me. WFC, thanks, Terry. It's a beautiful thing. I can save my life here. <laughs> okay, so you got Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is up 35 cents today. Uh, 52.54. We take a look at this on a weekly first. Oh, this is interesting too. So you know, th this was this had that high volume swing low from October of 2014, down to 46. Sure enough, we get to 47.75 with way too much volume. That's on the weekly. Put this on a monthly. Well, on a monthly, you get 44 again. Thanks, brother. Uh, yeah, 44 is game. You see, they, all these banks, folks, you know, did go higher, you know, from September of uh, 2013. And, you know, bottom line, you went higher. And there was just no juice there whatsoever. Now, I want to go look at the SPY. I'm going to, I think the SPY was trading in, in 2000. What I want to see is this. You know, at the 4 o'clock hour, right, right, folks, what we had done, the NASDAQ, oh, the SPY had already taken that out. See, that's different. Dow Industrials took it out, too. What, what had happened is that in the 4 o'clock hour, we had done the, the NASDAQ composite, folks, has double topped. And this is really intriguing because... You know, it, it took 15 years to get back to the high. And when you take a look at this high, it's, it's unbelievable, actually. So the composite, the high in the composite, 5132. That first high was generated in March of 2013. Well, the first high was generated with 32.7 billion shares. Well, we took that out, and we took that out in July with 9.5 
billion. But guess what? It didn't even close. It got over it. 5132. Let me just see this. Yeah, it didn't, man. Oh, this is sick. This is going to be a technical analysis uh, book in MIT, folks, okay? Check this out. This is, a, this is crazy, especially when you're dealing with bigger numbers. The high, you know, if you have my book, The Out of Time and the Trade, you, you, testing is basically you either go to highs or go to lows. You have volume or you don't have volume. You either hold price or you don't hold price. It's always intriguing when you're dealing with bigger numbers, though, and it's like, how does it not hold numbers or how does it hold numbers? In this case, you're dealing with the number of 51.32. That's your high. You're dealing with 32.7 billion shares. Well, we get over it, and then we close at the end of the month at 51.28. You, you close four points underneath it. That's the first part. And that's not a big deal, but it is a big deal when you're dealing with the 5,000 number. This is the big deal. You did 9.5 billion shares. So we did almost, what, 25 billion less? A 29, that's uh, 2023. 20, you did 23 billion shares less. Now, that's not the end of it. The end of it, not the end of it, but the next part of it is that then you come off that high with volume. That's saying that the NASDAQ is the double top. You know, we'll see where this shakes out, but it's always intriguing doing that. But then six months, eight months, a year later, um, you can go back to it. The cool thing is knowing it now and being able to trade that versus going back six months or eight months and say, oh my God, that was facing me in, right in the face. What that is all about, what is that about? That's about walking in the store, there's knowing in the store, they mocked up the product and you bought the product. You know, and I haven't told the story in a long time, but guess what? If we were all inside a store, folks, if we were all inside a store and something was on sale, and the first time that we went there, you had 100 people. Guess what? You buy something. The next time we went there, and you have 50 people. Would you buy it for more money? Some of us would. Next time you went there, there's 25 people. I can tell you something. If you're all looking at each other, you wouldn't be buying it. Well, I, I don't think you'd be buying it. I hope you wouldn't be buying it. <laughs> but bottom line, that's what supply and demand is about. You know? So um, that is a, a, a large number. Now. Apple. Apple is going to, Apple is the problem inside, well, that's one of the problems inside the NDX 100. Uh, you get the IBB, that's one problem, and Apple's the separate problem. Uh, what you have out here with Apple today is this. Apple did have an expansion of volume, subtle. It, it saved itself. It's only down $1.28. The volume, however, moved to $61 million. You know, yesterday you did a high of $46 million. I'll show you the screen. And the screen that we're pulling up right now, what you have inside the screen is this. These are the block trades inside Apple. They're monsters, folks. You know, now that makes sense because Apple has a monster market cap. But you're talking, you're not talking about retail traders here. You're talking about 35,000, 20,000, 30, 35 at a clip. And there's a, there's a lot of them. I mean, there's, there's a lot of trades out here. That is distribution in a huge way. And... The slow turn, and it's very subtle, but that's what you have happening. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials up 138. NASDAQ up 96. Not, has a, a NASDAQ up 19. S&P's up 17. We're going to be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Thank you.
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. Join Andy Hecht as he shows you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to Brent in Martinez, California. Hey, Brent, what's happening, brother? How are you doing today, Tom? I'm doing great, man. You having a good day out there? I'm doing well, thank you. Two o'clock in the afternoon out there. That's that's a disconnect for us, man. It's a trip, man. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty much ready to go home at this point, I'm sure, right? Well, you know what? You know what? It, 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 it's so wild because I did, let's see, what year? We're in 2015. I, I was always on the air from four to six for like 14 years. Now I've been doing maybe 15 years. So three to five feels like I got a day off. It's so funny, man. Do you know what I mean? Getting out of here at 5. 5.30. I know we don't leave it at 6 anyway, but it feels like a day. It feels like you're still off. I can't imagine 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You know? <laughs> I think I told you when I first started listening to you, it was just on the radio. There was a station here locally that had you. Yes. And uh, I mean, that's been years ago now. It's, I just always listen to you on my iPhone. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's, that's where it all started, Tom. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. Well, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here, man. I don't know how many years it's been now. It's I know it's back when you and Steve used to do the show together in the morning I and mean, all that kind of stuff. So sure. It's been, it's been a while. <laughs> all right, that's a quick, you know, that's, uh, that was probably seven years ago, man. It Listen, it blows my mind. I, I, time, there's no doubt, folks, you know, take advantage of it, man, because it, it flies, no doubt. Oh, you have to. And then my kids have grown up so fast, it's crazy. And yeah. I always try to do as much as I can with them, and I always did. We'll continue to do that. That's right, man. That's what living's yeah, yeah. about, man. Living's getting out yeah. there. Get off the couch. All of us. We gotta get <laughs> off that freaking couch, man. Forget it. Oh, absolutely. I was calling about uh, Freeport. I'm really happy with the way it's acting technically. I'd, I'd had a quick question. I would never trade on a, any kind of a rumor. I just wasn't sure if you saw the little news blurb about. Uh, I guess there's a chance that, uh, or at least that news little clip was talking about BHP potentially uh, putting in a bid for him. Did you see that at all? I haven't, but you know what, you know, I, I'm sure you probably heard. I mean, I'm a wicked commodity bull right now, folks, even as a couple days ago. I mean, I'm talking about all commodities too. Um, and what will happen is this. Someone, they're going to need a lot of money, not necessarily, you know, FCX, okay? But what does happen is that the large commodity companies of the next era, meaning another seven, ten years from now, you know, all these companies have got killed. So whoever has money, and this is where cash always wins out, folks, is that whoever has cash, and that's why cash is king, if you can buy the asset at 
inexpensive prices where we're at right now, guess what? You're, you're king of the hill. You know, for the Freeport, you know, has just gone from $58 down to 13 They could give Freeport, you know, 20 30% premium on their price. Big deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, It'd still be a bargain, absolutely. It'd be an incredible bargain. And, you know, uh, what, what does happen is this. Just so, you know, I think anyone that's buying Freeport, um, I think it'd be kind of tough. This is why. So Freeport takes in 21 billion folks, but the secret in Freeport Mac Moran is this. Now listen to this, because I don't think, you know, I've never heard this out there, but I, I you know, I've heard it out there because this is how I found out about it. Because Freeport Mac Moran in the 80s had these B shares that were paying dividends that were just awesome, okay? It was like, that's when gold was like nothing too. But the reason is that Freeport Mac Moran has this mine and it's one of the largest gold mines in the world, but it's really slave-driven. Um, and when I say slave-driven, uh, not necessarily slave-driven, but it's because of the country it's in. It's an armed mine. Um, you can't get into it. The government's involved, meaning. So when I look at that, I'm saying to myself, you know what? If someone tries to take that over, are they going to be able to deal with the political aspect of it at the same time? You know, but I think Freeport's going higher. So, you know, I'd hang on to it. Cooking, brother. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Take care, man. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it. Dive into it, man. Grab it. Have a blast with it. Thanks for being here, folks. See you tomorrow. Go get them, folks.